hello there welcome back to my channel i don't know about you but this is one of my favorite times of the year not only because the weather is cooling down Christmas is right around the corner, but because we're having all of these amazing sales beginning, including the Sephora Savings event. This year's event runs October 27th through November 6th, and depending on your reward status with Sephora, depends on when you can shop and how much your discount is. So that ranges between 10 and 20% off. The great thing is that is off of basically almost everything that Sephora offers. Not only does that include all their perfumes, and skincare, but all of the makeup products as well. Now, the other wonderful thing is they offer 30% off all Sephora collection items, regardless of what your reward status is. So this is an extra great time to focus on any items that you might have interest in in the Sephora collection. So in this video today, I wanted to try and narrow it down because if I were to simply give you all of my recommendations at Sephora, we could be here till next week and you would have a list that's a mile long and you'd be so overwhelmed. So I'm going to focus this video on some of my top favorite newer products or maybe products that I haven't talked a lot about recently that I think are really top notch. Now, because I know some of you might be interested in skincare or maybe a foundation that isn't one that I'm going to talk about today, check the description box down below because I will have a list of kind of my current top favorite foundations, concealers, etc. So check that list for other recommendations that are kind of staples in my collection. But without further do let's go ahead and jump into this I have about 10 to 12 products that I'm going to talk about here and then I will also share with you what is on my current wish list if you're new here hit that subscribe button now let's get started so first I'm going to begin with Sephora collection items and as I mentioned if you have ever been interested in trying something in the Sephora collection now is the time to do it there are three things that I'm going to highlight today two of which I have had in my collection previously and one's on my wish list. So first off is the Sephora Best Skin Ever Foundation. I am wearing this on my face today. I pulled it out just to refresh my mind of how it performs. This is a great medium coverage foundation. It lasts so well on the skin. It gives the skin a natural matte finish. It's not dewy, but it's also not flat matte. It really lasts well on the skin. I do personally have to powder it, but as long as I do that on my combination skin, this lasts all day without a primer and without a setting spray. It also comes in a huge range of colors, yellow base, cool base, neutral base. So there's pretty much a shade for everybody out there. So this is a fantastic buy, especially at 30% off. The next item, I'm going to show this, but I just checked online and it's on sale for $10 already. So I'm hoping this is still in stock, but this is one of their baked face palettes. Now, I don't know if they're coming out with any new ones for the holiday, but this is the only one I see on their website right now. But in general, their blushes, their bronzers, their highlighters, I have always found them to be good quality, especially these baked formulas. These remind me of the Hourglass powders. They're so soft and silky, and yet they're very buildable on the skin. This is the Micro Smooth Enchant Palette. It's a multitasking. I bought this last spring during the sales event, and I have really enjoyed it. Now, as I said, it's on clearance already, so you can get 30% off that $10. I mean, seven bucks. Come on. This is like a steal. So even if this is not available online, check your stores and just take a look overall at their blushes and bronzers and their baked products. They are phenomenal. The third Sephora collection item I'm going to highlight are their eyeshadow palettes. And this one in particular is on my list. It's part of their new holiday collection. There's something about this color combination that just is so intriguing to me. Now, if you read reviews on their eyeshadow formula, you will see kind of a broad range of opinions. I have purchased several of their smaller palettes in the past and I have found them to actually be very good quality. I always use them with a primer, but when I do that, I've not had any issues with longevity of wear or pigmentation and they are so affordably priced. So definitely look into their eyeshadow palettes. That would be another 
favorite category in the Sephora collection. Now, if you're interested in my favorite concealers and face powders, setting powders, finishing powders, check the description box down below. I don't want to talk too much about those here, but I'm going to now move into color products for the face. And number one, this was also a new purchase when I was in New York, and it's the House Labs Bronzer. Now, this really reminds me of the Gucci bronzers in the fact that the formulation is so smooth and buttery that it just melts into the skin and it really perfects the skin. I have the shade Light Level 4. Now this comes in a broad range of colors. I would recommend if you can go in the store and swatch this just because it might be a little tricky to find your perfect shade online. But having said that, they're very buildable, so I feel like you could make several different shades work for your particular skin tone. But I have really enjoyed this. Great ingredients, talc-free formula, definitely something top on my recommendations list. Now going into blushes, I feel like this was the year for me to try all kinds of cream blushes. And again, I could give you a whole list of probably 20 great cream blushes at Sephora, but I'm just going to give you one to focus on, and that's the LYS blush. These are called the Higher Standard Satin Matte Cream Blushes. This shade is confident. Now, not only is the pricing on this so affordable, especially for Sephora, I believe the full size is around $18. But the ingredients, this is a clean beauty brand. They really do great ingredients. And this formula is supposed to work particularly well at helping to control oil. There's kale and clay in here. So as somebody who has a little tendency to get shiny, that is something that's super appealing to me. But I also have a friend who has drier skin and she loves this formula as well. Now on my wish list is a set of three of these blushes. And I am planning to purchase this and it is at a fantastic price. Of course, they are three minis, but I think that is a perfect size for cream blush because let's be honest, that's a lot of product to use up before it goes bad. Now, if you're somebody who sometimes likes a cream blush, but you sometimes like a powder blush, another recommendation, and I've probably recommended these a couple of times before and they're not new to me, but I might pick up a new color. They are the Patrick Ta Blush Duos. These are a fantastic deal. They are great quality. You have a powder blush on the bottom and a coordinating cream blush with a cover on it at the top. I think this formulation is beautiful. And for most of them, at least the ones I have, the powder formula has maybe a little bit of a satin finish, but don't be thrown off by that. There's no chunky glitter in there. And the way that he actually recommends using this is to do the powder first and then you tap on the cream on top of it. You can do that. You can just use the cream. You can just use the powder. You can mix and match shades. I just think this is a very versatile formula, very forgiving, easy to blend in. And a couple of my favorite shades are this one. This is She's Blushing. And then I have She's So LA, which I think is one of the most unique ones. It looks like a bronzer, but this is one of my all-time favorites when I don't know what color blush or if I'm doing a very colorful eye this is the blush that I pull out and use. And then of course he has lots of deep shades, some very bright shades like this one. This is She's a Doll. This is a very popular blush color right now. And this is one that actually I find very forgiving on the skin. And then I also have Oh She's Different. I think this was the first one I ever bought and it is beautiful, especially for fall and winter. The last cheek product that I want to talk about is the Hourglass Palette. Now I have mixed feelings about this. So I purchased mine on the Hourglass website because I wanted the colors in the snake palette, but I didn't want snakes on the cover. I don't like snakes. So I was able to customize the outer packaging with what I wanted on the inside. Having said that, I got the deep version because these are all new shades except for one, and I didn't have this shade. So I wanted to be able to try all new shades. Now, if you have never purchased an hourglass palette or powders before, this is one wonderful way to be able to try blushes, highlighter, finishing powder, and a bronzer. And even though it's really expensive, 
it is still in the long run, I think the best way to get a view of all of those products. Now, if I didn't already own several of the other colors that are in the other palettes, I would probably recommend going with the Jellyfish cover one or the Leopard one. So that's the kind of light and medium versions. Those pa The colors in those palettes are some of my top favorite, but I have enjoyed these. These are brand new colors, but really beautiful formula. So if this falls in your budget and you've wanted to try Hourglass products, this is definitely a great way to do that. All right, let's move into eyeshadow. Now, if you know me at all, if you've watched many of my videos, you will know eyeshadow palettes are probably my top weakness. It's right up there with lipsticks. <laughs> so it's really hard for me in these videos to narrow down just a couple to talk about, but I did it. Now, the first two you have seen me use and talk about before, so I won't spend too much time, but the newest release of the mini, this is the Natasha Denona Mini Starlet Palette. I think this is beautiful. When I first got it, I couldn't put it down. Just really, really enjoyed it. It's really a wonderful combination. You have this cool shade here, but then you've got some warmth and they all just work beautifully together. You can get very soft daytime looks with it, but you can also get a little smoky if you focus more here. And this is a palette combination that I think works well any time of the year. So I have almost all of the other minis, not all of them, but almost all of them, and I love them all. But this is the latest one and my latest favorite of the minis. Now, the other of Natasha Denona palette I'm going to talk about, I'm sure you guys only need about two seconds to come up with the name. It's the I Need a Nude palette. This eyeshadow palette, this came shortly after the Starlet palette and I couldn't put it down. I did not want to stop using it. It was so user-friendly. I just love the colors in here. The slight little bit of rosiness really made this palette much more user-friendly for me and just more compatible with my skin tone, I feel like, than the Glam palette. But just like I felt with the Glam palette, I feel like every time I use this, I just get a very beautiful, sophisticated, slightly glamorous look. It doesn't have to be dark and sultry. It can be, but there's a lot of light colors going on in here, mid-tone colors. I just think this palette is beautiful. There's some unique finishes in here. So if you are in the market for a higher price tag, neutral palette that you could literally use every single day, I would highly recommend this palette. Now the third palette release, this is a brand new release, would be if you're saying, Shirley, you know, this palette's beautiful, but that's still out of my price range, even on sale, but you love neutrals and you love kind of cooler leaning shades, I would go with the Anastasia Beverly Hills new Sultry palette. Now, if you've been around the makeup world for a while, you might remember that Anastasia Beverly Hills had a sultry palette that was 14 shadows. It was in packaging more like this, and it was several years ago they discontinued it, but it was a favorite even back then because it had some cooler shades. Well, I was so excited to see they re-released the sultry palette in a nine pan version, and not only is this slim packaging so easy to travel with, to pack, to store in your makeup room or your makeup area, but it's also a nice plastic, a good hard plastic that is easy to clean. And the shades inside, these are the nine shades that they chose to put in, and I think these work so well. I am wearing this on my eyes today. I have been wearing this almost nonstop over the last week, and I've just really been enjoying it. Again, it's one of those palettes that has cool tones in it, and then it also has a good mix of warm tones, but not too warm. So if you're somebody who really likes neutral eyeshadows and you get either overwhelmed by a large palette like this or a palette like that is not in your budget, check out the new Sultry palette. Now, if you had that Sultry palette or you've had other Anastasia Beverly Hills palettes before, you may recall that the formulation of her matte shadows back then used to be pretty powdery. And in fact, a lot of people did not like her palettes because of that. She's done something new with her formulation. They are so much 
more tightly packed, but they are very pigmented still, transfer well, blend well. The shimmers are so beautiful and just soft and they don't have any drop down as you're applying them. So highly recommend checking this palette out. They also came out with the Modern Renaissance nine pan palette. That's been tempting to me. I've not seen it in person yet, so that might make its way on my wish list, but I do have the full size version of that palette. So I might be able to resist that one. Now, as I was doing this video, I also thought, is there anything that I would really recommend you kind of steering clear of? And usually I don't talk about too many of those products on my channel or in these videos because it's recommendations. But I want to talk about this palette because a lot of people look forward to this yearly release from Too Faced and they're always super cute. The color combination is always different. And so I wanna talk about the Too Faced Maple Syrup Pancakes Palette. So I have mixed thoughts on this palette. First of all, I do love the color combination this year. It is very colorful though. So if you're somebody who is not really into a lot of color, this isn't gonna be for you. But I was so glad to see we're breaking away from just a palette of a ton of browns with two colorful shadows. Having said that, most of the colorful shadows in here, even the blues, all have shimmer. So this is a predominantly shimmery palette. There are five matte shadows in here, but I feel like that is the least number of matte shadows that we've seen in a long time in these limited edition palettes. The formulation I think is better in this one than some other past ones, but my main beef with this palette and even some of their smaller limited edition releases is they've totally changed the packaging. I'm not against cardboard packaging, but boy, do I prefer the metal tin packaging. It's just so much better quality, first of all. Same pricing, and yet we're getting cardboard. But the other biggest beef that I have with this is how they did the closure. So they didn't want to include a magnet, I guess. I don't know why. But because of that, this palette, after a few uses, will not stay closed. The way that they kind of engineered it to close is it has this lip. And so you can't just close it. You got to pull this up and go down. It's supposed to sit tightly. It's not a very travel friendly option, first of all. And I just feel like the packaging got cheaper and therefore they should have lowered the price. <laughs> so. If you've had your eye on this palette, those are some things to keep in mind. It's not a bad palette, but I would say if you're going to spend $50 to $60 on a palette, go for a Natasha Denona palette or maybe something from Huda Beauty, Anastasia Beverly Hills. Anastasia Beverly Hills has this new palette out, which is gorgeous. I've only started dipping my toes in this one, so I can't really speak to it, but the quality of these shadows, the packaging, I mean, we can actually travel with this palette. All right, last but not least, my other favorite category, lips. I'm gonna just mention the Natasha Denona lip liners because she recently came out with several more colors in I Need a New Lip Pencil kind of category. So I love her lip liners. Today I have on the shade Julia, which was the first one that I got from this collection. And these are some of the most long wearing lip liners. But the other reason why I wanted to bring up her lip liners in particular is because I know so many of you prefer using a nude lip liner. And I feel like she has the best range of nude lip liner colors of anybody out there. So I have three. And you can see there are varying shades of nude. So this first one is Julia. The middle one is Kala, and this darkest one is one from her newest release, and I think it's Naya. I'll put across the screen if that is not correct. But again, if you're looking for a nude lip liner that you can pair basically with anything and kind of even neutralize a brighter lip color, I would highly recommend checking out one of her lip liners during this sale. Next in lips is gloss, and I have one recommendation. It's the Anastasia Beverly Hills Lip Glosses. This is a rediscovered favorite formula. I used these years ago and then kind of as things do, you know, new things come on the scene and I forgot 
how much I love this formula. Well, they recently came out with some new colors and this color in particular, this is pink ginger. I love this shade. I love it on its own, but I also love it over just about every lipstick I own. It just provides a little bit of a neutralizing. So if you have a brighter pink or a brighter orange or bright red or dark brown, this can neutralize that lip color, but also on its own, especially paired with one of those lip liners, it's beautiful. It has a metallic finish, but there's no glitter, chunky glitter particles or anything. Has a wonderful, sweet vanilla cake scent or vanilla Oreo scent. And the formula on this is not as sticky as I personally prefer, but it also doesn't just slide right off your lips. So it has some good, decent wear time. Not as long wearing as the Buxom lip polishes, but it is very comfortable. There's no lip plumping. I had somebody say that they're so sick of lip plumpers. This isn't a lip plumper, but it makes your lips look shiny and beautiful. Now, as far as lip conditioners, there is one that I'm going to recommend. I've talked about this a lot, but at this time of year, they always come out with special holiday scents and holiday sets. So if you've not ever tried the Laneige Lip Sleeping Mask, or if you're already a fan, check out what their limited edition scents are at this time of year. Last year was the Pumpkin Spice. I don't know that they brought this back, but this is the full size. Now also last year, I got a set that came with the original strawberry, a peppermint, and gingerbread. I've been using the gingerbread. Oh my goodness. I love this one as well. So. I feel like just about every scent I've ever smelled is wonderful, but at this time of year, because I'm a baker, I love all those baking scents. This is the time of year when I like to stock up. Now, one jar, this full-size jar, lasts me for a whole year, actually beyond usually. And I slather it on at nighttime, and it's still there in the morning. But I use a ton every night, and I still, have a good amount of this left. So it seems a little pricey for a lip mask or a lip balm, a lip treatment, but trust me when I tell you, you are going to get your money's worth. And this is the best, in my opinion, lip treatment out there that you can do overnight. You can also put this over the top of your lipstick as your gloss, and it actually lasts probably the longest of many lip glosses that I have. So really, really highly recommend checking out the special edition sets. Now let's move into lipsticks. There are two that I'm going to talk about. Now first are the Natasha Denona lipsticks. I love her lipstick formula and I don't feel like I hear anybody really talk about this much. I don't know. But again, I feel like she has a nice range of more nude, neutral leaning lipsticks. So you're not gonna get really funky fuchsia lipsticks or really, you know, lots of red lipstick colors. But I feel like if you are somebody who likes more neutral leaning lipsticks, you will love her lipstick range. This one is her Dream Collection lipstick color. This is one that I purchased, I think early this summer and I love this color. It is on me a nice kind of cool rosy mauve color. I love it. I have I Need a Rose lipstick in Peony. This one has maybe a little more warmth to it than that My Dream, but it is more pink. If you're somebody who loves kind of more nude or pinky nude lipsticks, check out the Natasha Denona ones. The packaging is great and the formulation as well. Now the final lipstick brand though I wanna talk about is what I'm wearing on my lips today. And it's one that I told you I kinda of rediscovered before my trip to New York and New England. And it's the Armani Lip Power Lipsticks. I bought one of these last year and I have to tell you, it was one of those, should I really spend that much money on a lipstick? Mm, it was in and out of my cart. I heard several people rave about it, finally bought one. And oh my word, I went right around and bought another color. And then I found a lip set with two of them on sale. I think it was at the end of the year. So I own three different colors. And the one that I'm wearing right now, and it's my most used color, is 104. And so many times in recent videos when you've asked what lip color I'm wearing, it is this one. 
Now, what is so amazing about this formula, you see, I just touched up, I added a little, it has a nice sheen and shine. It feels very hydrating, but this lipstick will stay on your lips for hours and hours and hours and not be drying. I used this as I traveled and I was shocked even after eating, after drinking, I would still have some lip color left. It doesn't wear away strangely. It's just a fabulous formula and one that I feel like is truly unique. The other two shades that I have are number 500 and forgive me, I don't have their actual names because they don't put the name on here, just the number. So I'll link and list everything down below. So I have number 500 and then I also have number 504, which is a nice dark, deep kind of burgundy brown shade. So I've had this one put away for the summertime, but I'm anxious to pull it out and start using it fall and winter. And then let me swatch the shade 104. Now I feel like they have a lot of variations in the nude neutral category as well. This is 104, this is 500, and then this is 504. So I feel like they have a lot of variations. So they've got ones that have more peach tones to them, more pink tones to them. So there are a lot of options, check them out. But just keep in mind that even though it is one of the most expensive lipsticks I own, not as expensive as Tom Ford lipsticks. But on the other hand, if you only have to apply it once or twice a day, you're not using as much product and therefore it's going to last a lot longer and you're gonna get your money's worth. All right, so that brings us to the end of my recommendations. Now, as far as what is in my current shopping list, I'll just put it here on the screen and scroll through for you what's currently there. It's no guarantee that something else might not get added at the last minute because I'm like you, I'm watching some of these recommendation videos just to make sure that I don't miss something, right? So, but right now you can see I have several limited edition gift sets there. I have a couple of eye creams that I wanna test out, the Sephora Collection eyeshadow palette. I also have another shade. I might end up with two shades of the Armani Lip Power Lipstick. So definitely we'll keep you posted on what I end up purchasing. I am planning to make a stop in my local Sephora store, and then I will also be probably purchasing online. So let me know down below what is on your wish list, and I will keep you posted. I'll probably do a Sephora haul try on video. I think many of you enjoy those types of videos, so I will be planning to do that as well. Check the description box down below, not only for links and a list of what I talked about in this video, but also, as I mentioned up front, I will give you kind of my top favorites at the moment for foundation, concealer, powder, contour, bronzer, all of that in the description box. Hit where it says more, and then you're gonna hunt and find where it says more again, and then that will give you the entire list of everything that I've noted down below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this and found it helpful. Happy shopping. Bye.